My name is Zuli Marie and I've been reading the Bible here on my channel. I hope that you join the journey and we can read the Bible together. We're currently in the book of Leviticus and let's get started. Leviticus chapter 21, Rules for Priests. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say to them, A priest must not make himself ceremonially unclean for any of his people who die, except for a close relative, such as his mother or father, his son or daughter, his brother, or an unmarried sister who is dependent on him since she has no husband. For her he may make himself unclean. He must not make himself unclean for people related to him by marriage, and so defile himself. Priests must not shave their heads or shave off the edges of their beards or cut their bodies. They must be holy to their God and not profane the name of their God, because they present the food offerings to the Lord, the food of their God. They are to be holy. They must not marry women defiled by prostitution or divorced from their husbands, because priests are holy to their God. Regard them as holy, because they offer up the food of your God. Consider them holy, because I the Lord am holy, I who make you holy. If a priest's daughter defiles herself by becoming a prostitute, she disgraces her father. She must be burned in the fire. The high priest, the one among his brothers, who has had the anointing oil poured on his head and who has been ordained to wear the priestly garments, must not let his hair become unkept or tear his clothes. He must not enter a place where there is a dead body. He must not make himself unclean, even for his father or mother, nor leave the sanctuary of his God or desecrate it, because he has been dedicated by the anointing oil of his God. I am the Lord. The woman he marries must be a virgin. He must not marry a widow, a divorced woman, or a woman defiled by prostitution, but only a virgin from his own people, so that he will not defile his offspring among his people. I am the Lord who makes him holy. The Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, For the generations to come, none of your descendants who has a defect may come near to offer the food of his God. No man who has any defect may come near. No man who is blind or lame, disfigured or deformed. No man with a crippled foot or hand, or who is hunchback or a dwarf, or who has any eye defect, or who has festering or running sores or damaged testicles. No descendant of Aaron the priest who has any defects is to come near to present the food offerings to the Lord. He has a defect, he must not come near to offer the food of his God. He may eat the most holy food of his God, as well as the holy food. Yet because of his defect, he must not go near the curtain or approach the altar, and so desecrate my sanctuary. I am the Lord who makes them holy. So Moses told this to Aaron and his sons, and to all the Israelites. Leviticus chapter 22 The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons to treat with respect the sacred offerings the Israelites consecrate to me, so they will not profane my holy name. I am the Lord. Say to them, For the generations to come, if any of your descendants is ceremonially unclean and yet comes near the sacred offerings that the Israelites consecrate to the Lord, that person must be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. If a descendant of Aaron has a defiling skin disease or a bodily discharge, he may not eat the sacred offerings until he is cleaned. He will also be unclean if he touches something defiled by a corpse or by anyone who has any mission of semen, or if he touches any crawling thing that makes him unclean, or any person who makes him unclean, whatever the uncleanness may be. The one who touches any such thing will be unclean till evening. He must not eat any of the sacred offerings unless he has bathed himself with water. When the sun goes down, he will be clean, and after that he may eat the sacred offerings, for they are his food. He must not eat anything found dead or torn by wild animals, and so become unclean through it. I am the Lord. The priests are to perform my service in such a way that they do not become guilty and die for treating it with contempt. I am the Lord who makes them holy. No one outside a priest's family may eat the sacred offering, nor may the guest of a priest or his hired worker eat it. But if a priest buys a slave with money, or if slaves are born in his household, they may eat his food. If a priest's daughter marries anyone other than a priest, she may not eat any of the sacred contributions. If a priest's daughter becomes a widow, 
or is divorced, yet has no children, and she returns to live in her father's household, as in her youth, she may eat her father's food. No unauthorized person, however, may eat it. Anyone who eats a sacred offering by mistake must make restitution to the priest for the offering and add a fifth of the value to it. The priests must not desecrate the sacred offerings the Israelites present to the Lord by allowing them to eat the sacred offerings and so bring upon them guilt requiring payment. I am the Lord who makes them holy unacceptable sacrifices. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons, and to all the Israelites, and say to them, If any of you, whether an Israelite or a foreigner residing in Israel, presents a gift for a burnt offering to the Lord, either to fulfill a vow or as a freewill offering, you must present a male without defect from the cattle, sheep or goat, in order that it may be accepted on your behalf. Do not bring anything with a defect because it will not be accepted on your behalf. When anyone brings from the herd or flock a fellowship offering to the Lord to fulfill a special vow or as a freewill offering, it must be without defect or blemish to be acceptable. Do not offer to the Lord the blind, the injured, or the maimed, or anything with warts or festering or running sores. Do not place any of these on the altar as a food offering presented to the Lord. You may, however, present as a free will offering an ox or a sheep that is deformed or stunted, but it will not be accepted in fulfillment of a vow. You must not offer to the Lord an animal whose testicles are bruised, crushed, torn, or cut. You must not do this in your own land, and you must not accept such animals from the hands of a foreigner and offer them as the food of your God. They will not be accepted on your behalf because they are deformed and have defects. The Lord said to Moses, When a calf, a lamb, or a goat is born, it is to remain with its mother for seven days. From the eighth day on, it will be acceptable as a food offering presented to the Lord. Do not slaughter a cow or a sheep and its young on the same day. When you sacrifice a thank offering to the Lord, sacrifice it in such a way that it will be accepted on your behalf. It must be eaten that same day. Leave none of it till morning. I am the Lord. Keep my commands and follow them. I am the Lord. Do not profane my holy name, for I must be acknowledged as holy by the Israelites. I am the Lord who made you holy and who brought you out of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord. Leviticus chapter 23, The Appointed Festivals The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, These are my appointed festivals, the appointed festivals of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. The Sabbath. There are six days when you may work, but the seventh day is a day of Sabbath rest, a day of sacred assembly. You are not to do any work. Wherever you live, it is a Sabbath to the Lord. The Passover and the Festival of Unleavened Bread. These are the Lord's appointed festivals, the sacred assemblies you are to proclaim at their appointed times. The Lord's Passover begins at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. On the 15th day of that month, the Lord's Festival of Unleavened Bread begins. For seven days you must eat bread made without yeast. On the first day, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. For seven days, present a food offering to the Lord. And on the seventh day, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. Offering the First Fruits the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you enter the land I am going to give you, and you reap its harvest, bring to the priest a sheaf of the first grain you harvest. He is to wave the sheaf before the Lord so it will be accepted on your behalf. The priest is to wave it on the day after the Sabbath. On the day you wave the sheaf, you must sacrifice as a burnt offering to the Lord a lamb a year old without defect, together with its grain offering of two tenths of an ephah of the finest flour mixed with olive oil, a food offering presented to the Lord, a pleasing aroma, and its drink offering of a quarter of a hin of wine. You must not eat any bread or roasted or new grain until the very day you bring this offering to your God. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come, wherever you live. The Festival of Weeks From the day after the Sabbath, the day you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, count off seven full weeks. 
count all 50 days up to the day after the seventh Sabbath, and then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. From wherever you live, bring two loaves made of two tenths of an ephah of the finest flour baked with yeast, as a wave offering of first fruits to the Lord. Present with this bread seven male lambs, each a year old and without defect, one young bull and two rams. They will be a burnt offering to the Lord, together with their grain offerings and drink offerings, a food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Then sacrifice one male goat for a sin offering, and two lambs, each a year old, for a fellowship offering. The priest is to wave the two lambs before the Lord as a wave offering, together with the bread of the first fruits. They are a sacred offering to the Lord for the priest. On that same day you are to proclaim a sacred assembly and do no regular work. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come, wherever you live. When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of your field, or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Leave them for the poor and for the foreigner residing among you. I am the Lord your God. The Festival of Trumpets The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, on the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of Sabbath rest, a sacred assembly commemorated with trumpet lasts. Do no regular work, but present a food offering to the Lord, the Day of Atonement. The Lord said to Moses, The tenth day of this seventh month is the Day of Atonement. Hold a sacred assembly and deny yourselves, and present a food offering to the Lord. Do not do any work on that day, because it is the day of atonement, when atonement is made for you before the Lord your God. Those who do not deny themselves on that day must be cut off from their people. I will destroy from among their people anyone who does any work on that day. You shall do no work at all. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come, wherever you live. It is a day of Sabbath rest for you, and you must deny yourselves. From the evening of the ninth day of the month until the following evening, you are to observe your Sabbath. The Festival of Tabernacles The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, On the fifteenth day of the seventh month the Lord's Festival of Tabernacles begins, and it lasts for seven days. The first day is a sacred assembly. Do no regular work. For seven days present food offerings to the Lord, and on the eighth day hold a sacred assembly and present a food offering to the Lord. It is the closing special assembly. Do no regular work. These are the Lord's appointed festivals, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies for bringing food offerings to the Lord. The burnt offerings and grain offerings, sacrifices and drink offerings required for each day. These offerings are in addition to those for the Lord's Sabbaths, and in addition to your gifts and whatever you have vowed, and all the free will offerings you give to the Lord. So beginning with the fifteenth day of the seventh month, after you have gathered the crops of the land, celebrate the festival to the Lord for seven days. The first day is a day of Sabbath rest, and the eighth day also is a day of Sabbath rest. On the first day you are to take branches from luxuriant trees, from palms, willows, and other leafy trees, and rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. Celebrate this as a festival to the Lord for seven days each year. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Celebrate it in the seventh month. Live in temporary shelters for seven days. All native-born Israelites are to live in such shelters. Though so your descendants will know that I had the Israelites live in temporary shelters when I brought them out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So Moses announced to the Israelites the appointed festivals of the Lord. Leviticus chapter 24 Olive oil and bread set before the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, Command the Israelites to bring you clear oil of pressed olives, for the light so that the lamp may be kept burning continually. Outside the curtain that shields the Ark of the Covenant Law in the Tent of Meeting, Aaron is to tend the lamps before the Lord from evening till morning continually. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. The lamps on the pure gold lampstand before the Lord must be tent continually. Take the finest flour and bake twelve loaves of bread, using two tenths of an ephah for each loaf. Arrange them in two stacks, six in each sack, on the table of pure gold before the Lord. 
by each stack put some pure incense as a memorial portion to represent the bread and to be a food offering presented to the Lord. This bread is to be set out before the Lord regularly, Sabbath after Sabbath, on behalf of the Israelites as a lasting covenant. It belongs to Aaron and his sons, who are to eat it in the sanctuary area because it is a most holy part of their perpetual share of the food offerings presented to the Lord. A blasphemer put to death. Now the son of an Israelite mother and an Egyptian father went out among the Israelites, and a fight broke out in the camp between him and an Israelite. The son of the Israelite woman blasphemed the name with a curse, so they brought him to Moses. His mother's name was Shilomith, the daughter of Debri the Danite. They put him in custody until the will of the Lord should be made clear to him. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take the blasphemer outside the camp. All those who heard him are to lay their hands on his head, and the entire assembly is to stone him. Say to the Israelites, Anyone who curses their God will be held responsible. Anyone who blasphemies the name of the Lord is to be put to death. The entire assembly must stone them whether foreigner or native-born. When they blaspheme the name, they are to be put to death. Anyone who takes the life of a human being is to be put to death. Anyone who takes the life of someone's animal must make restitution, life for life. Anyone who injures their neighbor is to be injured in the same manner. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, the one who has inflicted the injury must suffer the same injury. Whoever kills an animal must make restitution, but whoever kills a human being is to be put to death. You are to have the same law for the foreigner and the native-born. I am the Lord your God. Then Moses spoke to the Israelites, and they took the blasphemer outside the camp and stoned him. The Israelites did as the Lord commanded Moses. We're going to stop reading here. Thank you so much for joining me in our reading today. Please don't forget to subscribe so that we can continue these readings, and I pray to see you next time. Many blessings to you. Bye!